Welcome back. So the last few lectures, I have shown you how to solve uh, systems of differential equations with forcing. So not just x dot equals ax, but we have this plus bu, where u is some control variable or some forcing variable. And today I'm going to show you how to simulate these systems in Python and in MATLAB. OK, so there's a ton of really, really powerful tools built in um, to both languages to work with these kinds of control systems to do things like compute the impulse response and um, simulate the linear system for an arbitrary u, do step responses, things like that. Um, Interestingly, a lot of the technology that is used in MATLAB and Python under the hood goes way back. Like these algorithms were written in Fortran, I think like the year I was born, essentially. And they've been wrapped in both languages uh, so that you have all of that massive control functionality. OK, so um, a generic control system, a generic input-output system is not just going to have the dynamical system or differential equation part here. Um, where uh, here you, you'll also have an output state y, which generally could be a vector, which is going to equal some other matrix C times x plus another matrix D times u. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, decode this for you to start with, and then we're going to talk about how to simulate these in Python and MATLAB. So x is the internal state of your system, the internal state. Y is the measured or output state. Um, I think of this as kind of the output of the system, but it's generally whatever you can measure about the system. And U is the input, typically the control input that you want to manipulate. So these are input-output systems that have some internal state X that might be higher dimensional, bigger than either U or Y. So maybe I have you know, the global um, health population dynamics, and you know, there's billions of people on Earth. They all have some health state of whether they're sick or healthy. Maybe they, you know, we're trying to measure polio. And so I've got 7 billion states in X, whether they have polio or not. But I can't measure all 7 billion people, so my measurement is a massively smaller measurement of this very high dimensional internal state. And U would be my control intervention strategy. Okay, so, so that's just one example. For our purposes, we want to plot the full state x. Um, and so for our purposes, we are going to um, essentially assume that y equals x. And so c is going to equal the identity, the n by n identity and d is going to equal 0. This doesn't have to be the case, but in the Python and MATLAB examples, I'm going to choose c to be the identity because I want to plot the full state x when I do things like compute the impulse response. And the example I'm going to, to code up, I wanted it to be a little physical, so I'm going to start with a, uh, you know, a pendulum where we have theta, and we know that our dynamics are theta double dot equals minus sine theta plus some torque tau, where we're applying torque tau like that. And before I derived our linearized dynamics um, in the down position, linearized about theta equals zero, we have these dynamics ddt of a state um, theta omega equals, I'm pretty sure this is going to go way over. I hope that's a, not a problem. This is going to equal uh, zero, one, minus one, zero of my state, that's theta omega, plus zero, one, tau, okay? And so in this case, we're going to have our A matrix is equal to zero, one, minus one, zero. Our B matrix is going to be zero, one. And as I mentioned before, our C matrix is going to be the identity, one, zero, zero, one. So I measure both I plot both theta and omega. I measure both theta and omega. And my D matrix is going to be, again, 0, 0. Okay? So this is the system I'm going to simulate in Python and MATLAB, and it corresponds to the linearized down pendulum. Good, and I'm just going to show you all of the cool commands, like the impulse response, the frequency response, the step response, the Nyquist, and things like that. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of jump in and start showing you this stuff now. I'll point out again, um, I've said this many times in the last few lectures, I have a whole boot camp on control theory where we dive exclusively into these systems. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Um, 
this isn't terrible. I'm okay with this. Um, and I'll point out that I also have um, this book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering, where I have a couple of chapters dedicated entirely to this control system. So if you really like this kind of analysis, uh, chapters eight and nine are all about that here. And on our book website, um, databookuw.com, or on our GitHub uh, Dynamics Lab, there will be all of these codes for all of the control stuff in MATLAB and in Python. Oops. I don't want to save this, so I'm going to discard it. Um, and maybe I'll actually start with MATLAB because um, there is a ton of Python control functionality built into Python, but it is even more natively um, built into MATLAB. So it's been built into MATLAB for the entire time I've been using MATLAB, and so I think maybe I'll just start there because it'll be a little bit easier. And I'll make sure to give myself a little room here. Okay, good. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by defining these system matrices A, B, and C, and then we are going to do things like compute the impulse response and the step response and you know the frequency response, things like that. Okay, so let's just do that. And I have it pretty much already built in here, so you know you can download this code off of the course website. Uh, we're going to clear all, close all CLC. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter this A matrix, and I can see that I've added a small teeny tiny damping here. I've added a little friction, a minus one uh, omega term, so I guess maybe I have a minus 0.1 omega term here in my MATLAB dynamics. That's fine. That'll be interesting. That'll be... Um, you know, uh, minus 0.1 theta dot, and this will be minus 0.1, minus 0.1. This is going to make it a little bit more stable. Minus 0.1, minus 0.1. Apparently, I think that was important. Good. Uh, and then, you know, my B matrix similarly is 0, 1. My C matrix is a 2 by 2 identity, and my D matrix is 0. That's what you expect. And so in MATLAB, it's really simple. Uh, let's run this. It's really simple to initialize that system. So it is, it's this SS, that, that stands for state space. So this is a state space system. That's what this is called. Um, this is a state space system, an SS system, if you like, the SS, um, not the Stasi, the uh, state space system is this representation here. It's essentially a differential equation with inputs and outputs. And so just by running SS of A comma B comma C comma D, I get a system, and I think I just ran that. Let's try this. Okay, and sys is a continuous time state space model with uh, these parameters, with that A matrix, B matrix, C matrix, and D matrix. And so it makes it kind of nice. It actually tells you, you know, what are the inputs and outputs, U1, U2, uh, X1, X2, Y1, Y2, that kind of thing. And so once you have a state space system in MATLAB, it's really easy to do things like compute an impulse response or a step response or the arbitrary input response. So I'm just going to do uh, like impulse of my system. This is like one command. Let's hope I ran that. Maybe I didn't. Yep, there it is. And let me just make my uh, set GCA font size, you know, 24 or something like that to make it a little bigger. Probably could do this and make all of it a little bigger. Um, I can make my line widths a little bit bigger. But you can see the kind of output response of my system. You know, it's this damped oscillator of the first state is theta, the second state is omega, this is x1 and x2, and both of them are kind of this out of phase damped oscillation, which is exactly what you expect for a damped pendulum. Um, if I really wanted to, I could probably get the output of my impulse response. I would say, you know, impulse uh, system, and it tells me what the arguments are. So uh, the impulse of my system, and apparently t final is 100 here, so this is going to do an impulse up until t100. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if I said t comma x equals impulse, that'll actually spit out 
a big vector of time, and then a two-dimensional vector um, x that is going to have both components of, um, let's just say, what's the size of x? Hmm. It only gave me one input and one output. Oh, it's x comma t, sorry. Uh, and so what this is going to do is this is going to spit out a vector um, x, which is size 2 by all of my time instances, or maybe time instances by size 2 and a time vector. And I might do this if I want to plot my own impulse response because I hated the way that plot looked. It looked terrible. So I'm going to make a figure, um, and I'm going to have a subplot, um, you know, 2 by 2 by 1 by 1, and I'm going to plot t by x of colon 1, line width 3, uh, set GCA, font size 24, and then subplot 2 by 1 by 2, subplot. And then similarly, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but now I'm going to plot the second state of x. Hopefully this works, and it just looks way nicer. Okay, so this is kind of how you can pull that information out. So impulse is a really nice built-in command. If you just hit impulse, it'll plot it for you. If you tell it, hey, I don't want to plot it for me, I want the outputs of that impulse response, you can dump those into variables x and t, and you can plot them yourselves, and it looks a lot nicer. Um, you can do other things. You can do a step response. I can do a step of S of my system. And instead of giving it an impulsive input, which is like a delta function input, so impulse is going to say u equals a delta function. So u is literally some delta function at t. Step is going to say u equals 0 for time less than 0 and 1 for time greater than 0. And so here, u is actually going to be a step up. And so you can do a step of your system and give it a step response. This is like if you're in your car and you hit the gas and you hold the gas. So you want to you know, go faster. You don't just impulse the gas. That's feathering. You want to hold the gas. That's a step input. And again, it's a little hard to see here, but this is the step response of the system. You could dump those into a variable x comma t and plot them if you like. Uh, and there's a ton of other cool commands. Um, I could create some time vector from 0 to 50, and I could create a u vector. Let's just do this right here. Um, I'll plot t comma u with a line width of 3 and set my GCA font size 24. And so I've just basically created a u vector that's the same length as a time vector. I started out equaling to 0. But then for the middle third, I'm going to have it look like this big triangle, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Yep. So this is the control input u of t, a generic u of t that I want to input into my system. And so it's easy if I don't want to just do an impulse or a step, but I want to see what is the response to an arbitrary u, some, some u of t that I specify. I can do that here. I can create this u of t. And then I can run this lsim. This, this simulates my linear system. It's a linear simulator of my system with this generic control input u for that time vector t. Um, and again, if I run this, it'll just output x1 and x2 for those two states. If I wanted to, I could dump those variables uh, into x comma t equals, and I could use my same plotting routines from before, and I'll do that so it'll look a little nicer. And this is the response of my system to that triangular hat function uh, input in u. Okay, so that's kind of cool. You can do kind of impulse responses, step responses, or you can simulate the response to any old uh, input you, you like, whether it's a triangle function or a sine function. Anything you can dream up uh, is really easy. It's one line LSIM. Okay. Uh, some other cool things you can do is you can do something called a Bode plot. Um, Bode of your system. This is the frequency response. Literally, it is, um, 
it'll give you the magnitude and the phase of the response at, as a function of the input frequency. So if you was a sine wave of frequency omega, this will tell you how big is the output given a unit input at that frequency uh, as a function of frequency. Not just the magnitude, but also the phase of the output. Very, very useful uh, built-in command in MATLAB. Okay, so a lot of stuff you can do with linear systems uh, just completely built in to, to MATLAB. Now I'm going to show you Python. Uh, good, and there's actually a lot of ways of doing this uh, state space system analysis in Python as well. Um, I would actually recommend probably the um, best place to start is using this control uh, toolbox box, this Python control toolbox. Um, this is developed by a large team uh, of researchers internationally. I know Richard Murray at Caltech has been involved. Uh, when I was a grad student, myself and, an, and a number of other grad students uh, actually wrapped a lot of these old 1980s Fortran codes and put them into to Python control. So there's a lot of the same functionality that you have in MATLAB uh, in this Python control toolbox, and if you import from control.matlab uh, everything, it'll have exactly the same um, syntax as everything I just showed you in MATLAB. So this is kind of nice. You can basically create transfer functions. You can create state space systems with A, B, C, D matrices. You can do things like compute the Bode plot that I just showed you in MATLAB. Here's the Bode plot in, in Python. It looks nicer here because my fonts are not tiny and illegible. Uh, let's see what else you can do. Yeah, you can create A, B, C, D matrices and create, um, you know, system state space systems or transfer function systems. You can compute the impulse response really easily in the same way, one line to get the impulse response and so on and so forth. So tons and tons of functionality in this Python control toolbox. All of this, again, I have this in chapter eight of my book that I showed you. So all of those codes are on uh, databookuw.com uh, or on our Dynamics Lab GitHub page, and it all uses this built-in uh, control toolbox. If you don't want to import that because it requires, you know, maybe there's some uh, overhead to importing that, you can also use this um, kind of built-in SciPy signal toolbox that has a lot of these, um, these functionalities too, for example, that has a built-in state space, impulse, and LSIM. So this is the code that um, Alan Kaptanoglu modified from mine. So similarly, if we run this, uh, it'll import all of these. It'll create these A matrices, again, with a small damping. And then uh, creating, it's again, the exact same kind of notation, state space, to create the state space system. And then to create an impulse and plot it, is you know just as easy as before, one line impulse, and then similarly um, you know creating this U function that we're going to input for a generic U, and LSIM is again a one line built-in command using this uh, SciPy functionality. So pretty nice. Uh, you can simulate, you can build and simulate these state space systems. You can compute their impulse responses, their step responses, their arbitrary system responses, their frequency responses. You can do that all in Python or in MATLAB. Really, really powerful stuff. You can design controllers. Remember when I showed you how to stabilize that inverted pendulum? We designed a U equals KX um, that, that, that stabilize that inverted pendulum. All of that code to design stabilizing controllers and Kalman filters and anything you can dream up in control theory is pretty much now built into both Python and MATLAB. Uh, and if you're interested, you know, I have a ton more stuff in uh, my control bootcamp and on the book where you can check that out. This was really supposed to just be a teaser showing you, you know, for these systems, there's a lot of software out there. Okay, that's it for now, thank you.